Let's figure it out. Calling it now. Three in a car, one in a truck. Valuable and adding value for your clients. Welcome to Foxy TV, episode 46. Monday morning, the week started off with the team meeting. We try and do one of these every Monday. They usually run for about 10 to 15 minutes. They're pretty quick, getting everyone on the same page, making sure we all know what is happening for the upcoming week. But what I was thinking is if you want to get all the beds, couches, and big stuff on first with Kev, and then Janessa can hang back with Kev and they can both get all the small stuff. I quickly caught up with Jake to see what the week uh, was looking like. We've got probably eight installs, I think, uh, and six or seven pack-ups as well, so it's another pretty solid week. There we go. Busy day. Four, four things today, four tomorrow, and then we've kind of got a few unconfirmed at the end of the week. While the team were out and about, Phoebe and I are in the top warehouse taking some photos of products for our upcoming launch of our online store. We're doing photo shoot at the moment, getting um, all the bits and pieces, styling up for our online store. Mm. So, doing a little bit different. Do you want me to go into that? Sure. Um, so, we're going with the concept that when you buy bits and pieces for your home, it's the same as if you go and buy a home, so it's really hard to piece to imagine everything together. So rather than showing you everything individually and styling it, and you can buy it as a ball dining spread. So if you like what you see, always get in touch and let us know because it's probably going to be available to buy. Now I was fairly slack this week. I wasn't able to get out and about and go to the installs and get any footage. But I know watchers of Foxy TV love some of the after photos. So here's some of the photos from this week's installs. Because I wasn't able to get out and about, I don't have any footage of the team doing their installs or pack ups or anything interesting like that. I had to find something to put in this week's Foxy TV episode. And sure enough, I found something. For those of you who have been around watching Foxy TV since episode one in January, you might remember episode two where Jake took out a desk, his computer in warehouse one, and talked through an article. But if you didn't watch, here's a quick snippet. So, I found this article, I thought I would share it with you. It's got some interesting things in there. So we're gonna do it again, but this time down in Warehouse 2. But before you do, you may have noticed uh, these not so healthy mustaches on the faces of the guys here at Foxy TV. We're participating in Movember, which is only a few days away from ending. We had a goal to raise $500. Now we're at $165, a fair way off our goal, unfortunately, but that's okay. We're still raising money for a good cause. Thanks to those who have donated so far. And while we might not make it to the 500, we want to bump it up a little bit. So if you'd like to contribute, you'll find links um, in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, or if you're watching from Instagram or IGTV, you'll find a link in our Instagram profile description. On with the show, over to you, Jake. Hello, uh, so Recently, I've realized that I've just ticked over a milestone, uh, fairly unimportant, but I've now been working full-time in Foxy home staging here for 500 days, uh, a little over that. So, as I say, a bit un unimportant, but at the same time, I thought it gives me an opportunity to reflect a little bit on um, my first 500 days as a business owner and operator, uh, and some of the key things that I've learned, some things I guess I expected going into it or, or thought I knew, some things I thought I knew, but probably underestimated. Um, and other things that I didn't really um, expect or a bit of a surprise. Um, I should clarify, Foxy Home Staging has been operating for over 500 days. It's uh, coming up on two and a half years now, um, but uh, Phoebe kind of ran the business for the first 12 months solo, um, and I helped out in the background while I worked elsewhere. Um, but just over 500 days ago, I quit my corporate role and dove into the business. So what I've done is I've written an article that just sums up the key learnings and I thought I would go through it very briefly. Um, so there's five key things that I've come up with and I'm going to share them. The first one is that uh, 
growth costs money. Um, now this one is obvious. I think most people will at first um, thought, will agree with this and, and think that's yeah very obvious. But it's one of those things that I thought I knew and I didn't fully appreciate or I under, underestimated the impact um, or the, the significance of this point. Now we're an ambitious business. We've been growing very fast and we intend on continuing that fast growth um, into the, the short term, short and medium term. Um, but one thing that has always been a challenge and it's probably the most constant challenge that we've come up with and, and some of the other ones I'm gonna get into, but cash is, has been the constant challenge at all times of the year, uh, regardless of what's going on in the business. Um, and it's come down to, to growth. Now, we obviously, I'm sitting in a warehouse, we have staff, um, there's a lot of overheads. But one thing that probably I didn't appreciate fully was that when you're quiet, it makes sense that cash flow is going to be an issue. You don't have the same income coming in. Um, when you are busy, you are also just as um, tight on cash because as a business that owns its own stock and is trying to grow its, uh, its level of stock and inventory, when you're busy, you need to go and buy more. So at every point of the, the curve, I guess, the business curve, um, we have been tight on cash. And on top of that, you are looking to increase your team, um, bring in more people. We're looking at marketing and, and putting money there. So every dollar has been pulled in a, in a number of directions. So uh, I guess that's you know the key learning there is that um, we have to be very protective of of the cash that we do have, deliberate about how we spend it, um, and we've learned very quickly that message, but also that we need to know the market cycles. We need to get good at projecting what our cash is going to be doing. Second key learning is do the simple things right and do them consistently. Um, now in a very short space of time, I've seen and we've seen the industry, home staging industry in Brisbane grow quite significantly. Um, and we speak a lot to others in the industry. And one of the constant challenges that others find, and, and, and we're not immune to this either, and it won't surprise anybody, is that in the potentially uh, crowded marketplace, people are finding it hard to win more work or bring more work in. Um, now, three years ago, we, we were at zero. We had no business at all. We didn't know any or have any contacts in the industry. We didn't own any stock. Uh, so we started completely from scratch. Uh, now we believe we're one of the biggest staging companies in Brisbane um, in terms of the, number, the volume of work. And we found that the main thing that has gotten us there is to do the simple things right. Now, this sort of thing sounds almost too easy, and I think that's why it gets missed by a lot of people or, or underestimated. Things like returning phone calls and emails, responding promptly, same day, uh, being genuinely helpful, and doing what you say you're gonna do. Um, again, they seem so easy, but we've just found that a lot of people, and, and I've put it in this article, it, it astounds me how many people don't get this right. Um, and I actually can attribute more of our success over these first two and a half um, odd years to doing those simple things right than I would to anything else that we've done. Um, there's obviously a lot of contributing factors, but doing those simple things has really had a big impact on the growth of our business. Uh, the early years are tough. Um, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, more than 60% of small businesses stop their operations within the first three years, and, and obviously the number of businesses that stop after that continues to grow. Um, and obviously there's a whole range of reasons why that's the case, but from what my experiences have told me, I summed it up as uh, starting a small business is fucking hard work. Uh, and there's a lot that goes into that statement. Um, I've mentioned it already, cash is tight, uh, it's stressful, no one knows or trusts you in the early uh, days. You're competing against established businesses um, and who have built relationships in the industry. Um, you need to find out what your point of difference is, how you communicate that, um, and what you stand for as a business. And to top it off, as a small business owner, generally you are good at the thing that you are selling, your service or whatever it is. So for us, it's home staging and Phoebe as our chief stylist uh, is fantastic at that side of things. But as a small business owner, there's a whole range of other things that you need to uh, be dealing with and getting across. Things like uh, recruiting and managing people, um, bookkeeping, marketing, logistics. So all of these things that are Obviously, they contribute and they're an important part of the business, but they're not the thing that you're actually making your money from. Um, so dealing with all of that can be very tough. Um, and everything about running a business is hard work. So the first few years, as I said, this is something that I think we knew going in, but it doesn't change the fact that it, you know, it's been reinforced for us. Um, 
owning a business and operating a small business is hard work. And if you don't love what you do, there is a risk that the difficulties that you face can overcome you. Next key learning is all about our people. So people are the key for us. And, and look, this is cliche, you hear it all the time, business owners saying that your people, your staff are your most important asset. Um, I believe in this 100%. I think that who you works with makes all the difference uh, and here at Foxy we established from day one that our team culture and the environment that we tried to create for our people had to be prioritised above everything else. Um, you know you know that you spend more time or as much time with the people at work as you do with your families at home so it's important to get it right. Um, but more importantly than that our employees are uh, you know they're a reflection of the business uh, and a reflection of us Phoebe and I as the business owners. Um, they're the ones that often we'll be talking to our clients, to, our, to the agents that we work with, um, with our suppliers. They're the ones that do the work a lot of the time. You know, we've got a team of stylists, so we're a staging company. Our stylists do most of the work. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, Phoebe's across it all and sitting in the background, but they're the ones that actually go and implement the work. You know, we've got Cody does the marketing for us. We've got the logistics team who take stuff in and out um, and they are often on the front line talking to clients. So they're the ones that actually do the work and represent our business. Um, put very simply, uh, our people are our business. Um, and as business owners, Phoebe and I believe that it's our job to create an environment for them, for our people and a workplace that's supportive, challenging, uh, exciting, rewarding, fun, and it's just a place that they enjoy coming every day. And I think without that, Foxy Home Staging wouldn't have achieved what it has to date and what we plan on achieving in the future. Uh, and the last kind of key learning or the key point that I, that I wanted to highlight that um, stuck out to me in our first 500 days uh, or my first 500 days in this business is that everything we do is rewarding. Um, everything about running your own business to me is interesting uh, and engaging and even what might seem as a, a mundane task becomes enjoyable, or at least that's the way I see it, when you can see the direct impact that that task has on the big picture and everything you're trying to achieve and linking that to you know, the goals and, and the vision that I have for the business in the future. Um, I spent the first 12 months uh, and even a little bit more than that when I, was, when I came into the business in the truck as part of the removalist team, um, taking furniture into and out of the houses, loading and unloading trucks and it couldn't have been more different than my previous role in the corporate environment, you know, at a desk, um, dealing with Excel and financial models all day. And I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, and it, so it couldn't have been more different and, and probably looking from the outside, I don't know if I would have predicted that I would have enjoyed it and do enjoy it as much as I do. Um, and it's, it's, part, it's because I'm part of a team, I'm there on the front line with everybody. Um, you know, I'm enjoying doing things like increasing speed and efficiency, making things of, sure things are running faster, implementing processes. Um, I can see how it fits into what we're trying to achieve and for that reason it becomes more rewarding and enjoyable. Um, every part of, it, of my day, and I've talked to Phoebe about this and she agrees, every part of our day is interesting. Um, and this is one of those points, I think I expected that to be the case, uh, but I probably underestimated how rewarding it would be to be a small business owner. Um, so look, those are the key takeaways for me from my first 500 days in uh, the business of or owning and operating a business. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty more over the next 500 days. And look, it's, it's different for everybody. Every business is different. And I, I, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited about the future and, and what um, this business holds for us. And I'd love to hear what others kind of have been getting out of their businesses and, and how much of this kind of relates to them and uh, what they would add to the list. Thanks for watching this week's Foxy TV episode. We'll see you back here next week.